Are you looking for a quick and easy tutorial on how to get set up and running with AMS ads in just a matter of minutes? Then you've come to the right place, so stick around. Hey everybody, Keith Wheeler here and we're talking about AMS ads. In the previous video, I showed you how to come up with two to three hundred relevant keywords to use in your AMS ads. Now if you missed out on that video, that's fine, I've put a link to it in the show notes below. I suggest that you pause this video, go check out that link, get your keywords, and then come back to this video so you have everything you need at your fingertips to get your AMS up and running as quickly as possible. Now with that said, I'm going to flip the screen around and we're going to get started. So let's go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to ams.amazon.com and this is the Amazon Marketing Services startup page. Now if you have any kind of Amazon account, you're going to use that username and password to sign in. If you don't, then you can just register for an account. But I have an Amazon account, so I'm going to sign in. Now this is going to be my dashboard and I'll show you in a next video how to actually read this. But for now, we just want to jump right into starting a new campaign. Now the first question I'm asked is do I want to do a sponsored product ad or a product display ad? What's the difference? A product display ad will show up when someone actually searches for and selects a specific product. So if you have a specific book or books that your book is in direct compar comparison to and competition to, then you may want to consider this type of ad. Basically what happens is, is when they select the competitor's book on that page they're going to actually see your ad as well and it basically gives them one chance to choose your book over the book that they actually selected now I typically do not use product display ads for the main per reason is there is a minimum budget of a hundred dollars that is required for this type of ad I don't have that amount of funds budgeted for one specific ad. I like to stretch mine out over multiple ads. So I do the sponsored product ad. Now it's going to ask me which book I want to do it on. As we discussed in the previous video, I'm going to do mine on the My Buddy Knows Numbers. The first thing I have here is my campaign name. I try to change mine to make it more uh, understandable as well as shorter so it shows up better on my page on my dashboard so instead of this big long name I'm gonna just do the initials of it so my buddy knows numbers underscore and then whatever is specific to this particular campaign ad so this one is my initial one so I'm just gonna call it initial what's my average daily budget my average daily budget, the minimum amount for this type of ad is a dollar. So I like to start mine typically between two and five dollars. I'm just going to keep this one at two dollars a day just because it's my first initial ad for this particular book. Next it's going to ask me if I want to run my campaign continuously or if I want to select a date range. And as I said before, I select the date range and I usually start mine for to start two or three days from now so today's the 12th so I'm gonna start mine on the 14th and the end date is gonna be eight days from now and the reason why I choose eight days is because this campaign is gonna run internationally and so I wanna make sure that I have at least a full week's worth of data for all the countries so now it's gonna ask me automatic targeting or manual targeting Automatic targeting, I really don't like. Basically, it's the easiest way to do it, but it's Amazon just selecting what they consider, what the system considers relevant customer searches. And I found them to be either not relevant at all to my book or way too vague. So I always do manual targeting. And this is where you're gonna take in your keywords that you created from the last video and you're gonna put them in here. 
Now it's going to ask you what is your default cost per click bid. It's going to default to 25 cents. I always change that to 10 cents. Basically what cost per click is exactly what it sounds like. All of your keywords, when someone searches for that particular keyword or phrase, they're going to see your ad on the page. Now, it, they don't, you don't get charged for that. You don't get charged until they actually click on your ad. And when, you, when they click on your ad, that's when you're going to get the cost per click. Now, your cost per click charge may not be this 10 cents. It can be less than that. I've had ones that are only one cent or two cents. But this is basically you saying, this is the most I'm willing to pay per click. So if you want to set that to five cents, set it to five cents. Now, I will tell you that there are some phrases that if they're more common are going to cost eight cents per click. So if you set this to only five cents, any keyword you have that the cost per click is going to be more than that will not be set up for this particular ad. These are the at, these are the keywords that Amazon thinks is relevant to my book. Um, obviously, the name of my book, juvenile nonfiction and fiction. Like I said before, way too generic. I'm not going to bother wasting wasting impressions or clicks on those words. So I'm just going to go to add your own keywords. So now I'm going to go into my Excel spreadsheet and grab my keywords. post them right in here now I will tell you you cannot have the word Kindle and you cannot have commas or anything like that in your keywords or phrases if you do it will give you an error message again it's going to try to get you to to do 25 cents per bid again I changed that to 10 cents and then you click add and so as you can see some of the words because you know my book is about numbers I've got one fish two fish as I'm sure you probably know, that's a Dr. Seuss book. Um, I'm This will probably be closer to the 10 cents per click because it's a Dr. Seuss book. Uh, I'm also going to keep a really close eye on that one because it, it's probably going to get a lot of impressions, which basically means your impressions is the number of times your ad was seen. But if it's not relevant, it's not going to get clicked a lot. And so I'm, that's something I'm going to keep an eye on in my next video when I show you how to how to actually tweak your ads and now for the most important part it is my custom text this is what your ad is gonna say um, you wanna keep it short sweet and to the point you have up to 150 characters but let's be honest human nature says that we have very low attention spans and especially when we're shopping for something if it doesn't catch us in the first few words, we're just going to pass it by. So you want to keep it. It has to be at least a certain number of characters. Like right now, I'll say uh, provide text. And when I start typing, it'll tell me it's too short. But, you know, the other thing is you do not want to put anything in all caps. It will automatically reject your entire ad. I found that out the hard way. So learn from my mistakes. Okay, so what do I want to put? Well, right now it's the holiday season, so I'm probably going to put something like um, and so I'm going to say a great gift for the toddler in your life make learning numbers fun and then here's a preview of my ad as you can see this is the content right here this is exactly what they're gonna see when they do a search for any one of my keywords so I can either save this as a draft or I can launch the campaign so I'm gonna launch it now of course the first thing it needs to do is it's gonna go into Amazon's queue for them to review it you'll get an email back telling you whether or not it's been approved. What I have found is if it gets rejected, you really don't have a chance to like fix it and then try again. You actually have to start a whole new one. Hopefully, Amazon will fix will fix that soon so you don't have to start from scratch. But um, 
and then mine because I started it in a couple days it will not actually launch once they say it's approved it'll it'll be in the schedule so if I go to view my advertising campaigns I go back to my dashboard and as you can see this is the one I just did which is pending and then this one says scheduled because this one has been approved it just hasn't started yet so uh, this one's not scheduled to start until tomorrow so once tomorrow hits then it's going to start getting impressions and clicks and everything else so that's it for that uh, I wanted to make sure that I made you familiar with quick short and to the point on how to create your very first AMS ad now for best results AMS ads should not be a set it and forget it type of mentality. In fact, I suggest checking your ads at least a few times a week. Although to be honest, I check mine at least once a day. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to read your AMS dashboard, how to check the profitability of your ads, and how to tweak your ads all while they're still live. So until next time, remember to write right.